since the people of Troy for one, don't kill me. It's like two, oh yeah, the Greeks, I don't like them anymore. We, we had a falling out, you know, they chopped me up. Hey, they left a horse. Do you want to bring it inside? Okay, that was pretty cool social engineering attack. We talk about the horse, but we don't talk about the person who carried it out. And that was a social engineer of massive proportions. So mad props to him. Um, another thing is the bards um, uh, of old Middle Ages. They were social engineers because they weren't just trying to entertain, but they were actually in the employ of feudal lords who would then get that, gather that information because who actually went to the end to listen to the bards? The stable hands, the, the, the maids, it's like the guards coming back from the castle wanting to impress the local musical traveler, telling, giving them good intel. And then they would go back and report it. So social engineering has been a lot, uh, around a lot longer than an Amiga. So that, actually I don't even think Amiga's around anymore, but, but you, you understand what I'm saying. It's like uh, social engineering is here to stay. So also another thing is people don't cover very much is social, who's freaking attacking me while I'm on a freaking presentation for gosh sakes. That's not nice. Sorry, the men, okay. That was rude. Okay, so uh, how does social engineering actually differ between the cultures? Okay, well, quite simply, it, there is. In Asia, um, you talk about conformity persuasion, meaning people don't want to stand out too much. You don't want to like uh, create a disturbance, and you can use that during your your um, your uh, social engineering engagement. One of the trust models used uh, very well is in Japan, where you got a trust model, which is I trust you until you give me a reason not to trust you. Social engineering terms we call that jackpot. It's like, yes, you should trust me till you can't trust me anymore. Um, in Europe, it's authority-based persuasion. In other words, like in the Russian trust model, you're untrusted until you're trusted. Well, that might be a, different, a bigger problem, correct? Not really. I'm walking up to the place. It's like, I'm here for the surprise inspection of the uh, server farm. Uh, I need to be let in. Sir, you're not on the list. What part of surprise did you not understand? Obviously, you're not in control of the situation if you're not even understanding that I'm supposed to be here today. So why did they let you on this shift? Let me into the server room, and if you're lucky, I won't put you on the report. And that's how you do conformity. Uh, that's how you do authority base. And, and then don't worry, I always put them on the report. I was just lying. I, I will put them on there. Um, so, and, and that's how you do when you're dealing with like European. It's like you're dealing with authority based persuasion. And North America, it's need based persuasion, which is really cool because. You got to be polite. I was actually asked to do this um, uh, demonstration, social engineering demonstration, in a uh, secured location. Uh, I can't tell even what city it was in. It wasn't like a main one. It was just, uh, but it dealt with uh, financial stuff. And instead of going, you know, through the, the the bulletproof glass and the man trap and the armed guard and the metal detector and the X-ray, I just hang out by the employee entrance and waited for my target, which was a guy being followed by a girl. And so I go in and insert myself in between the guy, he opens up the door, and I hold the door open for her. I am a gentleman after all. And then I followed in right behind her. It's like, those are the kinds of things that we, we do a lot in, in North America. It's like, you won't, you'll question people, but what happens when I roll up in a wheelchair with four boxes on my lap and ask you to let me in? Are you gonna be that a-hole that's not gonna let me in the door? <laughs> no. Should you be? Yes, you should. But we want to be polite more than we want to be secure. And that's one of the biggest problems that we manipulate here in North America. In South America, it's like reciprocation based uh, 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 conformity. What I do with that uh, persuasion, what I do with that is I go like, hey, you know what? I'll put you on the report, show exactly how well you did. You help me out here. You make my report look good, I'll make, I'll make sure you look good. It's like, and I don't lie there either. It's like, I, I do put them on the report, okay, when they let me into the server room because they want to look like they're doing a good job. So I do appreciate that. Now, why are we having to do these things? Why are we talking about social engineering so much lately? It's like, well, quite frankly, it's because of the fact that there's a new OSI model in town, okay? This whole seven layer thing is gone. It's like one through six is busted. I mean, okay, yes, I will admit we still have SQL Slammer going out on the internet for some strange freaking reason, okay? But, uh, but it's, it's slowly dying out. People are understanding that firewalls might be a good thing to block, you know, 1433. But also, uh, layer seven, it's like uh, we can still attack layer seven, thank you Adobe uh, and Microsoft. It's like we can still attack layer seven pretty good, but now we're getting heuristic uh, intrusion prevention systems on the desktop, we're getting uh, uh, more secured code, 
Uh, we're getting more patches coming out, you know, every day. So that's sort of not dying away by any means, but it's slowing down. So where do we have to go? We have to go to layer eight, the human layer, the physical layer. The reason why uh, this person, this gentleman here is on here, he's the poster boy for layer eight security. Because this gentleman and stuff, you know, actually was in Tampa, Florida in March, spent 18 hours in an office building, 18 hours in an office building with no one questioning him, khakis and dress socks, brought dinner. Okay, I would love to tell you his name. He's never been caught. But he did steal off a lot of laptops, cell phones. Uh, he actually stole a suit. So the next time you see him, he'll probably be wearing a suit when he's robbing your building. So uh, at least he's upgrading wardrobe. So that is the reason why we have to deal with layer eight. Now this is a perfect example, thanks to Jay Cran on Twitter who actually gave me this. This is the perfect example of why we need layer eight uh, security and how effective it can be. Right here, these three right here, is him attempting uh, to do a network-based penetration attack. Red is denied, gray is uh, either attained, uh, not attained or, or not tried, and green is success. So network-based attack right here. Deny, 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 deny. Okay, you're not getting in that way. It's like a utter fail, so you, know, you don't go home dejected though. What do you do? You come over here to the physical location of the headquarters. Let's try Wi-Fi, not, not happening. Oh, how about walking through the front door behind somebody? That seemed to work. Let's find an empty uh, conference room. Bingo. Let's get our laptop onto the network. There we go. And let's just jump right over here to where we've got domain admin credentials. For some reason, I think they stopped. It's like I don't think these weren't not attainable. I just I think the, the, the company just, okay, you win. Back off. So that's how that goes. That's why this is so uh, needed and, and it's usually so successful. I have not always been 100% successful in a network based uh, penetration test. I have been 100% successful in every social engineering engagement I've ever been on. And like I said, I'm not that talented. So it's like it's just that's the way it rolls. So it's like and hopefully I'm not going to get now I'm here. It's like I might get caught next time. But so far as of this time, I've been 100% successful. So let's start with one of the stratagems. Stratagem three is killing with a uh, borrowed knife. In other words, you want to turn an employee's assets against them so it's not really you the one attacking, you let those people be the attacker. And some of the great tools for this is of course the Googles because you know everybody wants to be a trillionaire. And, uh, but also you have uh, Facebook and Twitter and uh, well, do we still use MySpace, anybody? Okay, just wondering, that's just professional curiosity. But there's also, uh, there's these tools out there. Those, uh, those are what you're going to use to do your data mining, to actually try to circumvent those. I'm going to be on Facebook all over the place, my profile. Not me personally, but Kathy. Hi. I'm Kathy. I like long walks on the beach. Watched all the Buffy seasons. They were awesome. Uh, it's like I've seen Serenity. It's like uh, I don't like the notebook or uh, vampires that glitter. So it's like, uh, but we also happen to be in the same company fan page. And I just friended you because, you know, we're in the same, uh, we work at the same company in different cities and stuff, you know, but you're, you're real great to help me out and be friends. And, and yes, I'll help you with your farm and, you know, I'll kill who you need in Mafia Wars. And it's like, it'll be all great for about two weeks. And then I'm going to need help. My executive, who's, who I'm the assistant to, has lost his passwords and stuff. You know, he needs me to reset them, but I can't get a hold of the, the, the network guy. Can you help circumvent all that process and get me in trouble? I'm going to get fired for this. I mean, seriously, I need your help. It's like, can you hook me up and just reset the password for, for that account and, and just save the day for me? Be my hero? You will. I'll give you an extra cow in Farmville. Thanks. There you go. And that's how you use the employee. But how else do you do it? How else do you do social engineering besides directly manipulating people? Well, it's also good for doing intel. There's a lot of good choices. Thanks to uh, a couple other people, it's like I'm not going to drop docs on Adam Savage like I planned uh, because I can stalk you. It's a much better website for that now. It's like, um, but also we also have Evil, which actually shows the Facebook phone numbers, people that post their actual phone numbers on Facebook. All uh, one-stop shopping for phone numbers there. Please rob me an oldie but a goodie. It's like, uh, and th th this I can stalk you. Actually, when you take an iPhone picture and it still has geodata in it, they're nice enough to tell you exactly where you're located, and then put it on the internet for everybody to see. That's where the whole stalking thing comes in. And then uh, my favorite is just the old Twitter search headed to. 
because I started out this uh, talk when I was thinking about doing this and showing the, the danger of Twitters, I decided to go bad. I want to do the most evilest thing that I could think of by using Twitter. What could I do that could be so evil on Twitter? It's like, what could I do? What kind of damage could I do? If I had resources and I had the time and, and the meanness and, you know, and just, I'm not really a mean guy, but it's like if I, if I was thinking that way, what could I do? Well, I could search my locations. You know, the Twitter uh, app on the Blackberry is so nice to tell you exactly where you're geographically at at the moment. And so I started searching for my loc. And I found this guy. It's like teaching healthcare provider CPR at WAH. The only thing that made this guy different than anybody else was I was wondering what WAH was. It's like, what's WAH? Well, it turns out it's Washington Adventist Hospital, which is right down the street from Walter Reed Hospital. Any feds that know where this is going, I'm a very good guy. This is all hypothetical and I'm not trying to do anything bad. So please, you know, you got other things on me in your files that you don't need to add this to it. Um, so what I started to do was like, hmm, let me find out more about this LinkedIn guy. Now he's got my attention. Now I'm interested. So where do I go? Oh, hi, Steve. Everybody say hello to Steve. It's like uh, he's, on, he's on LinkedIn. He's a volunteer EMT. It's like he's a volunteer fire and rescue association. What I liked about here is that he's a consultant at Northrop Grumman Mission Systems. You know, that's telling me he's like possibly top secret clearance. It's like he used to use databases and stuff, you know, 20 year database design and development. If I'm going to do something bad, especially in the Washington DC area, it's like I'm not going in as the kebab salesman. I'm not going in as a street vendor selling hot dogs and water. I'm going in as a first responder. Why? Because people aren't going to be the douchebag that stops the fireman to get into the fire for proper credentials. People aren't going to stop the police officer trying to respond to an event, especially a major event, that might involve important people that happen to live in the area, especially around Walter Reed Hospital, especially if they're an EMT there to, to help out and assist. That could lead pretty bad. But you'd have to find this guy. I can't track him down everywhere he's at so, you know, and hope that he's at the same spot as soon as I get there, right? It's like I'd have to know where he lives. Where would he live? Oh, he lives right here. Thanks, Steve, again. I feel sort of bad, you know, for Steve because I'm dropping docs on him and stuff like this, but it's like he dropped them to the world. I'm just showing it to you guys. So I'm actually showing it to less people than he did. <laughs> so, so I don't feel too bad about it. Now I know where he lives. So now when he's dead and I got his identity and stuff, you know, and certain events can uh, occur and stuff, you know, that I can make occur, I might be able to have access to Walter Reed Hospital, which is a very bad thing, which is a very evil thing, which I would never do in real life ever. Okay. I had to put a disclaimer in there just because I'm paranoid. So I love LinkedIn. Let's not just pick on the little people. Okay. LinkedIn is the Facebook for corporations. I mean, seriously. And they're also a great gold mine. Look right here. We've got uh, Scott, um, not the, the popular profiles. I don't care who's popular or not. I mean, I never did in high school because I wasn't. But, uh, but let's look at these people. We don't care about the marketing and recruiting and placement. Why would they be popular? Because you want to get a job. I'm looking down here. Who got promoted? Who are new hires? Oh, this person three months ago. They might have a personal assistant that I'm now their personal assistant. We just started up three uh, months ago. We're working on ramping up our new uh, uh, data center and we're going to need, uh, uh, need you to reset the passwords because they got out of sync because of the RSA token. Can you just reset all the passwords? I'd greatly appreciate it. It's like uh, also another good thing is I'm from, I'm, I, I graduated from the University of Oklahoma. If this was University of Texas, it's like uh, and was the highest pop percentage. That's where I had to come from as well. Um, bases in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So if I'm attacking Oklahoma, I'm from the Tulsa office. From the Tulsa office, I'm if I'm attacking Tulsa, I'm coming from the Oklahoma City office. A lot of, I actually finished a uh, region social engineering engagement, was able to forge an email, put it on an iPad and get access to a server room from two different searches on Twitter and LinkedIn. I was able to forge an email good enough to put on and get me into a server room just from the information that I gathered off of this. And I didn't attack the low level guy, I was attacking someone higher up. It's like the executives are like that, you get uh, CIOs, CEOs, they're susceptible to this kind of attack and you have to be careful what you publish on LinkedIn and Twitter. So 
I'm not just picking on the look. See, I, I'm not going to the guy that's just trying to hit on 